your left, it's Keith, Ross, and Barrich against, on your right, Thomas Pasoko and Job. Two teams that know each other pretty well, truth be told, here on the SCD Tour. Tom is the newest member of this little team battle. And this one should be good. Both players are on six. They'll be given the green light. will be underway here from Vegas in just a moment. Tom looking very reflective. Kicking things off with a dry dart, but it's not a fast dart. It's a Cavern of Souls, and it's a champion of the Parish there for Brian. For the boss, does he have a land and a blighted agent, perhaps? That would be a good one. I can't imagine keeping this hand if he didn't. <laughs> Especially if he knows the matchup, then it's worth keeping some, I, I think, some more modest opening hands as long as Blighted Agent is involved. Looks like the boss is going to sacrifice a windswept teeth. going to fall down to 17, get himself a breeding pool. And we'll see what comes next here. And it will be a Blighted Agent. You said you'd be surprised if he didn't have one. He certainly does. So we're going to go back over to Brian. Brian will draw. Picked up a copy of Kite Sail Freebooter. That's not a bad one to play here. And he will play a Freebooter trigger. Take a look at exactly what Tom Ross is working with. I've got to become immense. Looks like i got a couple of lands, and I've got a Blossoming Defense. Now, I think the Become Immense is probably the more threatening of the two. Yeah, but I think uh, Basoku has a Medley Mage to follow this up with. So in, in that case, I think you'd want to take the Blossoming Defense and then Medley Mage Become Immense because Ross can't cast it the next turn. Blossoming Defense is a selection. Here comes the Champion of the Parish for two points of damage. We're going to head back over to Tom Ross, whose hand is not particularly good right now as he draws a card. Picked up a Misty Rainforest, did Tom? He's going to attack here for one Infect. He'll play a Verdant Catacomb and simply pass the turn back. So you mentioned that Meddling Mage. That could come down and name become immense here as Ether Vile is the draw here for Ross. Now, one thing Tom Ross did mention to us earlier today is that he's not all that thrilled about his deck. Obviously, he knows how to play Infect, but he's a little bit rusty. However, his teammates' decks, he's very happy with. He thinks that Jody Keith and Aaron Barrage have great decks and great builds of both of those decks. As here's a Vile and a Noble Hierarch, maybe a little surprising there. Yeah, this is... I, if there, I'm, I'm honestly really surprised here. I mean, you're taking one, he, one point here of Infect for sure. You don't have an answer to the Blight Agent. You're giving Ross an opportunity to, to cast the Become Immense next he could, turn. He could just die next turn. Even if he doesn't die, you're just letting him cash in something where he's got a one-turn window to cash it in, mm -hmm. and it's uh, of major impact. Yeah, and I don't think that Tom is going to miss out on the opportunity to do so either. So no. Tom's going to sacrifice his Vernon Catacombs on the end step. Because the only reason to take Blossoming Defense I instead of Become Immense in this spot is if you have a follow-up Discard Effect or Meddling Mage. There's, yeah. no other, there's no other reason. It's not like you have removal where the untargetable part of Blossoming Defense is, is relevant, you know? Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, if you take The only card that, comes, that works itself into the equation right is Reflector Mage. That might be a reason to take the Blossoming Defense in what we're talking about here, but he didn't have one in his hand. Right, and so, he had the Mentally Mage. Yeah, and he doesn't have the mana to cast Reflecting Mage either. So I am a little surprised too. And Tom normally doesn't miss out on situations to cast this. Now, he picked up a copy of Distortion Strike. And now with Become Immense and Distortion Strike, that would be six, seven, eight. So that's one Infect short. And so then Tom would have to make it out of the next turn alive. He'll sacrifice this, uh, this Misty. Fall down to nine. Well, now he can become immense and leave the Dryad Arbor up to Trump Lock. Very true. On that Champion of the Parish. Or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know he's not going to miss his opportunity to get to become immense here. So this will be seven Infect. And Brian's going to fall down. A little bit lower. He's got eight infect now, and Tom is going to pass the turn back. So Brian's going to put a counter on the vial. He didn't die. It was a pretty risky play, though, letting Tom actually have the opportunity to play that become immense, see if it's going to come back to hurt him or not. Brian picked up a copy of Ancient Ziggurat. 
That's a Mantis Rider. There's the Ziggurat. This is a Mantis Rider. Counter there. You can see Tom's already geared up to block. And then four, five, six, seven. It wouldn't even be a lethal attack. Yep. Unless something, unless he, Brian were to vile something in here. I mean, you could vile through a one. There's no, of course, reason, yeah. no reason not to block. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly what Tom is going to do. And now it takes any pump spell to get the job done if you're Tom Ross. We know he's got a distortion strike. He's going to play it. He's going to come across here, and he's going to win the game. So Tom Ross is going to win game number one here over Brian Vasoko. As, in fact, up a game here over humans in a game that I honestly think Brian let get away. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really surprised by not following up that freebooter with a meddling mage. Yeah. And Ross understood that he had a very narrow window to cash it in. Cashed it in, and obviously <laughs> the six points made a difference. Uh, unsurprisingly, yes. When you only have to deal ten, six is going to make a world of difference. So Tom Ross will win game number one. You also see that Jody Keith has won game number one here over David Thomas. Eldrazi Post up a game here over Azoria Stoneblade. It's time for us to turn our attention to the sideboards here, folks. And we're going to see that Brian Basoko has two Graf Trigger's Cage, two Gaddock Teague, two Whirler Rogue, two Sin Collector, two Knight of Autumn, two Is It Static Caster, two Oriok Champion, and a Dismember. I think the Static Casters and the Dismember pretty obvious there, partner. Yeah, I don't mind Whirler Rogue also. I mean, it's a little bit on the expensive side, but that's a lot of a lot of blockers in the air. Yeah, I guess Rink Moth yeah. makes some sense. Okay. For Tom Ross, two Dissenters, Deliverance, two Dispel, two Shapers, Sanctuary, two Nature's Claim, a Distortion Strike, Spell Skype, Spell Pierce, Graft Digger's Cage, Relic Progenitus, Dismember, and a Carrion Call. I like the Dismember, the Spell Skype, the Distortion Strike, and a little bit, I, I, you could talk me into the Descenders Deliverance. I wouldn't want something as specific as Nature's Claim, but a little interaction for Aether Vial that cycles I think is fine too. Well, and those are the options there for both players. Game number two is going to be underway here in just a moment. But we are going to take another moment here to talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale because you get the opportunity to save big. Over at go.starcitygames.com. Yeah. Go? First time? Whew. First time over there? StarCityGames.com slash weekly sale. Check it out once a week. New weekly sale, new categories right now. 33% off select casual and commander favorites, but that's expiring soon because Monday, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, websites updated, new categories, etc. Book market. Make life easy for or yourself. Or just go over there now because you're that too. probably have access to the Internet <laughs> if you're watching this. Go.sarcygames.com <laughs> slash weekly sale. Well done. Good sell, though. Thank you. Good sell. We need, we, mostly, we just really need to get rid of those Rhystic Studies, so please, please go buy them. S so many. Yes, please. Because we don't want them anymore. It's not a good magic card. Uh, what does it do? Uh, any, I think it's any time an opponent plays a card, they either have to pay one or you draw a card. That sounds I'm not right. sure. That sounds right. Something, I'm so, or any time you play a card, they got to pay one and... Something that turns a game of Commander into just a completely unpleasant slog, I'm sure. <laughs> Can we bring that up, please? Rhystic Study? Now, it's no Rhystic is the cave. We've already talked no, about the cave quite a bit. nothing is the cave. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, right. you may draw a card unless that player pays one. That means all their spells have to cost, they, they should pay one more. Yeah, and it's sweet in Commander because so you have so many you opponents. Have so many opponents, yeah. And they're all casting... You know, whatever it is, explosive vegetations or um, uh, evoke creatures, flame, various flame tongues and draw twos. And I can see you're very well versed in commander. Mana ramping of various sorts. Yes. So you just sit there not doing anything, not engaging in the game, just sitting back and drawing cards and playing more mana until you kill all three of your friends in a single turn or whatever. That's my best guess. We need to slide you into Commander Versus with this kind of analysis. I would love to play with those guys. That'd yeah. be a lot of fun for me. You and the Green my Machine. My Commander is Zozu the Punisher. That's correct. That's correct. A perfect Commander for you. The perfect Commander. Can you play Commander with five people? I think you can, right? Yes, why can't you? Yeah, why not? Is just any number? I mean, Commander Versus is always four people. You can, Yeah, you can do five people, Commander. Zozu sounds nice. Zozu is... It's the opposite of Rhystic Study. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> true. That's a good commander. Get it over with. <laughs> we can just play another game. Oh, it looks like we have a, we have got quite a few Rhystic Studies. Go. <laughs> That's Star City Games. <laughs> Dot com. Let's help us out there, folks. 
work with, work with us yeah. here. Both these players take a look at their opener. Tom's not happy. Going to send it back. Brian's going to keep. Looks like Jonathan Job won game number one over Aaron Barrich. Good time to talk about Aaron Barrich's invitational token. We call that a transition. There's two slides for this promotion. First one's a full one, big picture of Aaron. Looks good. Next one, a little smaller with details of how to get it. Patrick's going to tell you those. Well, the easiest way, head over to any opener classic. You sign up, you get one of these tokens. Can't make it out, don't want to make it out, that's cool too. All over StarCityGames.com, $5 or more, send one of these tokens. Bang. That's good. We, we just destroyed now we, it. And now we, let, now we let this linger for a minute. Yep. And then transition back to the match. match. Yeah. Back there to the is. match. Nice. Back to the match. And you know what? You buy a couple Ristic Studies, enough to get a token. Right. That's the old one-two punch right there. Come on, check. Apparently just one. How much do these things cost? That doesn't, that's, is that really true? Ristic Study is $11 with the sale. Like a foil one? No, normal, normal. What? What's, foil one's $50, normal one's $11. I do not believe this. Go, that starts the games, <laughs> dot com. Patrick is looking it up on his phone right now while Brian's playing a second turn. I'll get you a wrist excited for Christmas if you ask now. That is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Tom with a forest after an eight-ball second. Fifteen dollars for a non-foil one, and we're sold out. That's right. How's that possible? That's right. There's a lot of commander fans out there. Dissenter's deliverance gonna kill the vial. Hello. Cavern of Souls. Is it time for a mana rider or a sin collector? Sin collector. Trigger. Take a look. Distortion Strike, Tom's hand is bad. Spellskite, Dried Arbor, Forest, Wooded Foothills. It's not good. It is not good. It's not good. Sin Collector, 2-1 Human Cleric, it exiles an instant or sorcery from the opponent's hand when it enters the battlefield. I think I would have preferred opening on Manus Rider in that spot. Give some beatdowns? Well, the Manus Rider covers you from blocking the Nexus should Ross fire it up. And the spells that are in his deck really are only castable if he's engaging in combat. And he's probably not going to engage in combat next turn because he doesn't have enough mana. And the, you know. No, I get you. That's fair. Forest, activate. Mm, nope. Yep. Groundswell. All right. Brian is at five, in fact. We're all tied up in Legacy, by the way, folks. David Thomas tied it up against Judah Keith. Eldrazi Post, Azoria Stoneblade. Getting ready here for a. Third and final game. Here's an attack for five. A little pressure now. Let's go back over to the boss. Who we know he's got a spell skite in hand. A wooded foothills, a dryad arbor. Looks like maybe another ink moth nexus. Taking that distortion strike was pretty nice. There's an ink moth. Here's a spell skite. I think that'll be it for Tom. We're going back to Brian. Brian's drawn Horizon Canopy. Another Manus Rider. Beatdowns. Ross will fall down to nine. The Spell Skite's important because it shuts off. Is it Static Caster? Ross has been flooding out a ton on camera today. It's been kind of ugly. Yeah. Yeah, ugly. Another Static Caster drawn. Those both are bricked now by Spell Skite. How about a third Manus Rider? Okay. Well, present lethal in the air. Tom's got some blocking to do. He'll activate both copies of Ink Moth Nexus and just block with one. All right, draw. Nope. <laughs> Prime Vasaka. <laughs> Gonna win game number two here over Tom Ross. Humans and Infect. All tied up. <laughs> I like the way Tom's first card is yeah, just done. feebly. Yep. This is infuriating. 
call that, we used to back in the day call that, not exactly that move, but something close to it. Used to call it the two scoops. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You would, Someone would shove, like angrily shovel, like take the cards that are remaining in their hand, put some in their right, put some in their left, and use them to scoop up all of their all cards. Their cards yeah. Yeah. Scoop it up, Buttercup. Yeah, scoop it up, Buttercup. That's right. That so was, long that was lost art of concessions and trash talking. The I shovel. Miss it. I miss familiar, it. You know the shovel? Uh, th- uh, probably. You cast a Supreme Verdict and you put the Supreme Verdict oh, you underneath shovel all, all their. Oh, you shovel them. all their creatures. Yeah. Well, you can. Well, you can scoop them up and then dump them into the into their graveyard, <laughs> yes, which yes. is my preferred yes. move. You can also just sort of just you know bulldoze them off <laughs> as you're describing. Both moves are fine. Power moves. Not part of the culture anymore. No, I used to. I used to employ the shovel quite a bit. I also used to just like to flick. I used to get my if I was killing your creature with like a smother, I would get my the smother underneath your creature and just flick it at you, which is completely uncalled for. If you rip something for lethal, you just put it face down and pass it over to like your that. opponent. Like yeah. that. Like that. I don't want to. I don't want to make a scene. No. But you should know about this first. Yes. I like that too. <laughs> The game's changed. It's so different. The game's changed, yes. It's so different. A lot of people back in the day, it was yep. It was a lot. Ohio, yeah. oh, New oh. Jersey. Yep. Oh, and Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan's on high and mighty now with other Pro Tour wins. Whew. Tell you what, they, they used to give some beats. They used to give some beats. Let's see. Let's talk about the Creature Collection. We got some new sleeves here on the Creature Collection from our Rise, Rise from the Nashes sleeves. I think we got playmat sleeves, player bundles. The whole, the whole shebang. The whole shebang. Yeah. Uh, go to starcitygamescom slash creature collection is where you can find this and a bunch of our other members of the creature collection. Again, rise from the Nashes here this month. Next month we'll have a new one for playmat sleeves and play your bundles. Go to starcitygamescom slash creature collection as I mentioned, as we're gonna get ready here to watch game number three of Tom Ross and Brian Basoko. It's Infect versus. Humans. The shovel is amazing. The shovel is a great move. Power move. Oh, here we go. What's up? Mike Turing just tagged me on Facebook. Okay. said, I just learned that my playing versus Cedric Phillips in a side event is one of his favorite magic memories. You bet it is. Mike's going to be at SCG Con. Cool, by the way. Yeah. Probably do some uh, some spell slinging. Was there any follow up to any follow up? He said he said how cool we will be reunited at SCGCon this December seventh through the ninth. Hope you can join us for some more awesome memories. See you there, Mike. Cool. Gonna be fun. I was playing. I remember I had braids in my deck. I was big big braids fan. Yeah, back in the day. Who was it? Big braids fan. You can't do anything. That's what I like. So many triggers to announce and potentially forget. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so into braids. Rancid Earth braids. That's game. It'll be a champion of the parish from an unclaimed territory. What was that stupid black-white braids that I called? It had a dumb name, like Noir. N-O-I-R. Noir? I never heard of that. Yeah, it had some stupid name. And it was like very, very popular leading into its regionals because it had like Vindicate and Braids and no good creatures because there were no good creatures then. Spectral Links. It had some white, yeah, it definitely had Spectral Links. It had some yeah, other white black. Spectral Links was busted. Yeah. That's played it at my first Pro Tour, which was extended. I think it played Phyrexian Scuda, which is a horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Scuda. Yeah. Phyrexian Rager must have been in that deck. Almost certainly. You know. Thalia on turn two here from Brian means the champion of the is a 2 2. Meow. Yep. I played this at my first Pro Tour along with four River Boas. That's an interesting mana base. Here's an attack. No, you gotta play, you can play the Revised Duels. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. It was Kai's New Orleans where he won with Illusions Donate. Ah. Four Funeral Charms. Maybe three. Honey Wumpus for who knows what reason. It's a powerful card. Reflector Mage. For a lot of reasons. Well... Looks like Boss has a blossoming defensor of Vines of the Vastwood here. To brick wall this. I mean, this is the ideal star for Brian, by the way. Pretty close to it, yep. Right? Champ into Thalia, make all your spells cost more. 
into Reflector Mage or Infect Creature? Yeah, the only draw that's arguably better is Hierarch and Static Caster. This is, yeah. this is probably the second best. Hierarch and Static Caster, Hierarch and the Reflector Mage on the Blighted Age on turn two, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a. Uh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's playing too fast. He's dead. Boop, 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 boop. He's boop. dead. Welcome back, Tom. Finally won. Brian Basoko is going to lose this match. Tom Ross going to win two games to one. In fact, going to take care of humans. I haven't got to see Tom play fast for a little bit. I knew he was dead. Dead, yeah. dead, dead. He's playing his spells too fast for dead. Well, also, the, it, it's sort of revealing that he fought over the Reflector Mage. Because if you didn't have it all rolled up, you'd probably just let it resolve. Yes. It's over. Anywho. It's just classic Tom Ross right there. We're going to watch Barrett and Joe play now, I think. Get a little standard in our life because standard is such a great format. Golgari mid range against Is It Drakes. Ooh, I can't wait to zoom into this one, see what's going on. We got some life totals updated, all that jazz. Crackling Drake is really big. I hope we're not walking into Aaron dying. I don't sad. mind. I know you don't. We'll just go watch some Legacy or whatever. All right, what we got here? Well, Aaron's okay. Well, Aaron's at 25. But is he empty handed? I think so. He's playing around with his graveyard. 12 power Crackling Drake. Aaron's battlefield right now. He's got six lands. Wild Growth Walker with a counter. Murfolk Branch Walker with a counter. And a Death Gorge Scavenger. Against Joe, who's got some cards in his hand. A Goblin Electromancer and a 12 power Crackling Drake. Barrett 25. Joe 4. Here we go. And if that trick is 12 power, then Job has an incentive to cast one more spell before attacking, even if it's a little bit mopey, to try to get the drag up to 13 power to kill in one hit next turn. Mm -hmm. Lava Coil will take care of the Death Gorge Scavenger. <laughs> little camera trick there, I think. In with the Drake. Well, I don't know what Job's got in his hand, but if Barrett's just able to draw a removal spell, he can kill the Electromancer and try to win the game. Let's see what this is. Secret Squire. All right. I mean, it pumps up the... It, it, it gets a turn off of uh, that by gaining three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now this is a lethal attack, so Job has to trade. Job's going to fall down to one. Job has two lands in his hand. Now, it's not impossible for him to chain together enough to kill him. You see Barrett hoping he doesn't die. So this is a big draw step here for Job. Otherwise, we're going to play a third game. What does he find? I think he drew a Crackling Drake. I think Job should have played one of his lands last turn. I think you might be right. There is the Drake. Just not bluffing anything, and he started chaining together stuff. It matters. He drew a Lava Coil. Lava Coil that. 6, 12, 13, 14. He's short one. Can you just say go? Yeah. The walker can't attack into a drake. If he draws a removal spell, you don't die. And yeah. just attack with both the next turn. Yep. I think I agree with you. And even if he peels a removal spell, you still have a draw to any spell in the deck next turn to get lethal. Uh-huh. So just hang tight. Attacking is unnecessarily risky. Right. Yeah. Draw a card. <laughs> That's dead. All right. Any Go. spell. Any spell. It's a good thing he didn't attack. <laughs> Any spell for Job to win. How do you do? That'll work. Lava Coil, take it down. Jonathan Job going to win this game of match over Aaron Barrich. That's going to tie up the match. Thomas and Keith, here we come. They're in game number three right now. Going to be exciting to see where they're at. And with these two great teams, of course they're going to have to play all three. That's how this works. Unless that third game is it over, I hope we get to jump that way. Not they don't appear to be in a big rush to ha help out uh, David here. So well, that means that David won because he did. He took care of Jody Keith two games to one. So the team of Thomas, Vasoko, and Job, who already have won a team constructed open here this year on the SD Tour in Dallas. They are undefeated still. They are 6-0 oh here.